In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a mail merge where you've got your data in Excel and your document, your letter, whatever you want to mail merge to in Microsoft Word. Now, let's talk about the setup of the data in Excel. First row, you will need some column headings. So I've got some delegate details here. I've got their address. I've also got some course details, course name, date, start and end time, price, discount, and customer price. So all this information is going to end up in this table in the Word document. So once you've got that Excel customer list set up, you go into Word. What I want to do here is link this Word document to that Excel file. So to do that, you go to the tab on your ribbon called Mailings. And then what I normally do is I go to Start Mail Merge menu, and then I choose Step-by-Step -step Mail Merge Wizard. And that gives you a nice little wizard on the right of your screen that will lead you through this process. Now, the first step is to select the document type. What are you actually creating? And you can see that Word allows you to mail merge to letters, email messages, envelopes, labels, or directories. Now, we are creating a letter, a letter that you're going to print out. So letter is the choice that I want, and I'm going to go on to the next step. So at the bottom here where it says step one of six, I'm going to go to step two. It then says select starting document. How do you want to set up your letter? Well, you can use the current document, which is what we're going to do. You can also start from a template or from an existing document, which you then need to open. Now I've already got this document open, so I'm going to use the current document. Let's go on to step three. Step three, select recipients. So you can use an existing list, select from Outlook contacts, or type a new list. We are gonna use an existing list, an Excel file. So to browse for that file, you go down to this little option here, and then I'm just gonna browse for that Excel document. So there's my Excel document customer list. I've got it selected, click on open. And it's asked me to select a particular table for the mail merge. So if you've got many sheets with data in, you'll have to choose the relevant sheet within your workbook. Down here, you have to confirm that the first row of your data contains column headers, which it definitely should, and that will be ticked by default. So I can just go ahead and click on OK. Then gives me this dialog box, just showing me the data that basically I'm now linked to in Word. You can do lots of things down here, like sort it, filter it, validate addresses, etc. But we know that we want to send a letter to all of these recipients. So I'm just going to click on OK. Right, OK, now we've chosen our list to base our mail merge on. We can start writing our letter. So we're going to go on to step four of the mail merge wizard. OK, first of all, we're going to deal with the address. I'm just going to delete that placeholder there. And I'm going to use this address block over here. Now, this is the address block that Word is currently creating. Now I can navigate through the different recipients to see what the address block is going to look like currently. And you can see that it's a bit incomplete. And that's because Word has an idea of what your field heading should be in your Excel document. And its idea isn't correct. So we need to teach it what our field headings are called in our Excel document. So to do that, we go to Match Fields. And let's have a look. So these headings here are Word's idea of what your field heading should be. And it's matched a lot of the fields for you. So for example, first name and last name, a match suffix, well, I don't have one. Company, I don't have one. Address one, yeah, match to address one and address two. But city, now I call that city and town. So I just need to teach it that that's what I've called that field, state. I'm in the UK, so I've called it county. Postal code, well, I've called that post zip code. Now, if I scroll down a little bit further, one other field I'm using there is email address, and it's picked it up automatically. Email is the field that I have in my data. Click on OK. And now if I just navigate through these different addresses, you can see that they are indeed complete. Right, so my address block 
is ready to go, so I'll click on OK. So all it's going to say in this view is just address block in these little chevron characters. Next, we want to say something like dear, whoever the recipient is. So I'm going to create a little bit of space for myself. And I want the dear or salutation line to be here. So I can go over to the greeting line option here on the right of the screen. So my options here are dear or two. I'll keep it as dear. I can choose how I want the name to appear, either formal or informal. And you can choose if you want any punctuation at the end of the greeting line. I'm not going to have any. Greeting lines for invalid recipient names. We don't have any, but if you did have missing names, you can choose how the greeting line should appear in that case. I'll just keep it as dear sir or madam. Now you can navigate through the different records to see that they appear OK, and they do. So I'll just click on OK. And again, it just appears as greeting line with these little chevron characters on either side. I'll press enter after it. OK, so we have a little bit of text now, and then we need to fill in this table with the course details. Now, one way of getting the relevant fields in this table would be to go over to the right of your screen again. And there is an option here called More Items. And I would want to insert the course field in this cell here. So I select it there and click on Insert. I'll close this, though, because I think there's a quicker way. And that would be to go up to the Mailings tab on your ribbon and choose this menu here, which allows you to also select fields to put in your document. So I'm going to choose course date there and then timings. So that will be start time, space, dash, space and end time. Discount and then price. OK, so I've got all the fields that I want to include in my mail merge. The next thing I'm going to do is preview the letter. So I can go over to the Mail Merge Wizard over here and move on to step five. And in step five, you have the ability to navigate through your letters. And one thing that's quite nice about this address block is that if, for example, an address doesn't have a county entry, if I go back to my Excel spreadsheet, you could see that this first address doesn't have either an address to or a county entry. Well, Word is clever enough not to leave blank lines in your addresses. One thing I don't like, though, is the spacing between the lines. And you can get around that by selecting the address. And I've gone to the Home tab of my ribbon. And you should see in the Styles group a style called No Spacing. And that will get rid of the spacing in the address. If you can't see No Spacing, and you have normal applied to the address. What you can do is right click on normal, go to modify, then go to format, then go to paragraph and take out any line spacing that has been applied here. So I can just change that to single, click on OK, and that will sort out that spacing issue as well. I now want to look at these fields for course date timings, discount and price. You can see we've got a number of problems. With the date, we've got an American format. I want a UK format. With the timings, I want to take off the seconds. Discount, I want to show in percentage format and price in currency format. Now, even though in Excel, I had these values formatted correctly, Word does not bring over that formatting. Let's start with the course date. What you've got to do is right click on the course date and go to toggle field codes. I will widen this column so you can see what we've got. So it says merge field C date. C date is the name of the field. What I've got to do is specify the format by first putting in a backslash, then an at symbol, then a space, then DD for day, slash capital M's for month, slash YY for years. And if I right click, an update field, it will show the date in the format that I want. Now, let's look at timings. Again, I'm going to right click on the start time. I'm going to go to toggle field code. Let's widen the column a little bit. So merge field start time, that's the name of my field. And what I'm going to do is put in another backslash, then an at symbol, as I did for the date. 
then a space, and then for the time format, if you're using AM PM format, you're going to need to put this in quotation marks because the format that I'm going to use is going to have a space in it. You'll see in a minute. So you have HH colon MM, then a space. That's why I need the quotation marks. AM slash PM capitalized and then close quotation mark. If I right click update field, it shows the time without the seconds. I can do the same for the end time. So it's backslash at space open quotation marks HH colon MM space AM forward slash PM close quotation marks. Right click and update the field. Now let's move on to discount. Now this is a little bit trickier. We've got to do is right click as we did before and then toggle field. Widen this a little bit. Now the first step here is to make sure that the merge field is selected and then use the key combination control F9. And what you'll see is it gives you an extra pair of brace brackets. Don't try and type those brace brackets in. You must use that control F9 key combination to input them. And then between these two first brace brackets, you put an equal sign. And then after that third brace bracket, you say times 100 then space, backslash, then a hash symbol, then a space, and we're going to say 0%. If you wanted decimal places, you'd say 0.0%. Right, so if I right click and update field, it says 0% there, but if I went to the second recipient, it would say 15%, 10%, etc. Last one is the price. So if I right click on that, toggle field code, then what I would do is I'd say backslash hash space, then a pound sign, because I want to express the amount in pound sterling, comma, hash, point, zero, zero. That would give me two decimal places. Right click, update field, which shows the amount with the currency format. Okay, I'll just spend some time changing these column widths, and then I'll get back to you. Before we move on, I'll just show you one other thing. You can actually show text values in upper or lower case using these codes. So if I right click here, toggle field code, I would say backslash star, and then just the word upper. Right click, update field. Before we complete the merge, I do want to display a little message at the end of this paragraph that indicates whether or not a discount has been applied to the price. Now to achieve this, if we go back to the mailings tab and then go to rules, there's an option there called if then else. So I'm gonna say, if the discount value is greater than zero, then insert the following text as a loyal, valued customer, you have received a discount. Click on OK. So if I preview my letters, the first delegate who has a 0% discount doesn't get that little message, but the second recipient who does, does get that little message. OK, our letter is ready to go. So what we can do is go to the final step of our mail merge wizard. And here you have two options. If you know that the letters are all ready to print out, then you can just click on this print option and then click on OK. If, however, you wanted to modify or customize, personalize some of the letters, you'd click on this option, Edit Individual Letters. Now, what that does is create a brand new document. I now have my mail merge document and this new document. This document has every single letter that the mail merge has created. And what you can do is just go into an individual letter and add some text. Then you could print it out in the normal way. Once you've printed it out, you just get rid of that document. 
This document, however, the one that is linked to your Excel spreadsheet, you can save and use next time you want to create a similar mail merge, maybe with different recipients in your Excel spreadsheet. Now, what if I wanted to email this letter rather than send it by post? Well, if we go back to our first step in our mail merge wizard, you can see here you have the option for email messages. So if I select that, just go through the steps. We'll keep the letter as it is. But in the final step, you'll see you get this option, electronic mail. So if I click on that, it needs to know who to send the emails to. So you have to select the correct field in your Excel spreadsheet to send these emails to. You can also put a subject line in, so we'll say training confirmation. And you can choose how you're going to send the body of this email. You can either show it in the body of the email, and that would either be HTML or plain text, or you can attach this letter as a Word document. So once you've done that, you can click on OK, and it will send those emails for you. Now, as well as being able to mail merge to letters and emails, you can also mail merge to envelopes and labels. I'll just quickly show you where those options are. If you go to mailings here, start mail merge, envelopes. And what you have to do is you have to choose the size of the envelope you're printing onto. You can also choose fonts for your delivery and return address. For labels, you go to labels here and you choose your label vendor and then you choose the product number for your label and you'll find that on the label box. If you're just printing out an individual envelope, you would click on this button and put in a delivery address and a return address. Or if you just want to print out a single label, you'd click on this labels button and type in an address here. And you can either print a full page of the same label or a single label and choose which row and which column to print the label in you may have a sheet of labels that's partially used. So here you can specify which part of the label page to print onto. Okay, that's really all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next video.